Hello you, welcome to Geekism, and welcome back to Pinewood Hills here in Planet Coaster, where uh, we're just taking care of a few little bits and bobs, to be honest with you. If you enjoy this video, please let me know by clicking on that like button. And if you're new here and you'd like to see lots more creative gaming for grown-ups, please click subscribe. So, uh, we're still out of the park, we're working on a campsite slash uh, adventure play area slash uh, lodge cabins, all that kind of stuff really. A bit of this, bit of that over today. Um, I won't lie to you, this was going to be the final episode before we release Stage 2 onto the workshop. Um, because all I really want to do is tidy this area up really and do a little bit of work in the 60s and 70s areas that still just, just need tightening up, just wrapping up, just finishing off a little bit. Um, unfortunately, I just, I, again, crashes. We might have found a solution though. I'm, I, I'm, I don't want to say what it is just yet in case it doesn't work, but as soon as we do, we'll do videos. I say we, uh, as the Planco community in general, uh, there's a few of us who've got a bit of an idea what, what the issue might be and how to fix it, so uh, that's going to be something we try and do. Anyway, a uh, couple of crashes, and then also just not quite that much time as, as I wanted in the game uh, this week. Uh, if you're following the channel, you'll know that I'm having a couple of weeks as a full-time YouTuber. This because of how videos work, uh, this was all done before that happened, so hopefully this week I'll have a good uh, chunk of time to play here. Uh, we'll be able to get uh, this out and onto the workshop for you. Uh, which will probably happen sometime this week. I'll do like a little video like I did last time uh, with a few glamour shots and things like that. Um, so we'll hopefully do that and then um, we'll start on the new area. So I'm not too sure what we're to do there. I think we're going to start working on Gulpy Land, uh, which is something I've had in the back of my head right from the very beginning of the series. A sort of very highly themed IP area, very similar to something like CBeebies Land, Alton Towers, or Nickelodeon Land at Blackpool, uh, Thomas Land, Angry Birds Land, all these UK parks that have got the kiddies areas. Um, with an IP based on them. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So uh, after quite a big extensive very low theming to be honest, I know the Googie area was a little bit themed, um, but uh, really yeah quite low theming for a while. Uh, we're gonna sind of have a bit of a higher budget area and it kind of it fits in with the law of a lower budget park you know often uh, these low budget parks it's the only way they can get some rides in them basically is by having uh, an IP come in and uh, sort of own the area or at least license the area so uh, yeah we're gonna be doing that using Gulpy and lots of the other characters in the game as well it's gonna give us a chance to use some of the flats that we don't normally use things like the whirly gig and also get some of the uh, the characters from the game in that we probably wouldn't normally do so uh, uh, here we're having a path, somebody mentioned this in the last episode, a path running from the uh, the logs right to the uh, adventure play area. And uh, it was a good idea, thought it would fit quite well, so we've just done it. It's not going to be a path that actually gets used, so we've done like a proper sort of dirt path, but we filled it out with the benches and, and lights, as you can see there, to make it look more like uh, it actually uh, is real. And then we have a bit of cable running down to a little junction box there, and then the cable will carry on running under the ground. Uh, this kind of area, I, I, I'm basing this a, a, a lot around uh, sort of national parks and walks that you can do in the UK, um, you know, sort of caving, that kind of sort of feel, usually because that. The, you know, health and safety is as good as they can make it, but there's often areas where you think, oh God, you know, you really hurt yourself there. For instance, the zip line runs right over this, uh, <laughs> runs right over this path, and without moving the whole thing, there's nothing really you could do about it. So um, they would just stick a sign saying, "Watch out for the zip line, don't be a dickhead." That's kind of the uh, the idea. That's kind of the health and safety uh, that happens a lot in the in the UK and Europe. I know that there's probably Americans watching, thinking this is crazy because we don't quite have. Although it's getting worse, we don't quite have the litigious society that they do in the states. So you know, a lot of the time, uh, health and safety pretty much just involves a sign saying, "Don't be an idiot." <laughs> Here then, uh, very briefly started throwing this down in this week's live stream. Here I'm filling it out. Basically, this is the building for the high ropes course. This is where you come in and buy your tickets, and uh, you know, inside there there would maybe be uh, maybe a little ca maybe not a cafe, but maybe you know, a pool table. What did somebody say in the stream? A pool table where the white ball's missing, and uh, you know, like a, a bookshelf full of books that have been donated by people. You know, that kind of thing, really. Somewhere where the kids come and hang out when the family are coming here camping. The kids don't really want to go. Couldn't think of a name for it. Uh, I was trying to think of something we could reference in the community. Uh, tried to think of something in Planet Coaster that's high up 
and Volvara came to mind, so uh, that's what we called it, the Volvara High Ropes. Uh, and um, we're also going to rob a couple of little bits out of uh, Leo Morsos, the uh, souvenir store. One thing we haven't done actually for quite a while is use some Planconian uh, language. We might come back in there, have a look, see if we can stick some Planko signs. The rock climbing area does have Planko um, words, but we haven't got any around here. Maybe it look assumed like a safety sign in, using some Planko. Uh, the other thing I wanted to, is ages and ages ago, we built these telephones. Now, obviously, these things would never get used these days, but um, they wouldn't be the sort of thing that you'd take out because you never know, do you? you never know what you need to pay for. So, uh, so we're just keeping those in there. They're a little bit over the top scale wise. Um, but I just I think they look good, so what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, again, using this uh, trick, we use this quite a lot in this area actually, where you put a bit of path down and then place the benches. This would be a little smoking area or something, this would. Uh, place the path there and then get rid of the path. And the benches stay there. Obviously, no, no guests are going to be able to get to them. But uh, they just kind of, no guests are going to really come up to this area at all. Uh, the log cabins themselves actually have hotels in them. Um, I didn't, uh, I've still got to go back and I think have to connect the rooms up to the hotels or something like that. But hopefully um, soon, or especially when by the time that uh, we release it on the workshop, the hotels will be functional. Now whether or not guests are going to actually make their way all the way up to this end of the park just to use the hotels, whether or not they actually can with the paths, because the, you know the paths, the paths up here are a little uh, funky. I don't know, I'm pretty sure they're actually connected to the real park, but I'm not too sure whether or not the, get, the hotels will be a functional thing. It'd be nice if they were, uh, but really I haven't had enough... Uh, time messing around with them to actually find out whether they work or not um, in the setup that we've got. Here, doing a little bit of fencing. There's this really crazy thing. This came in, I think, Adventure Pack, this one. Um, and we can make a little gate there. Basically, this whole area needs to be sectioned off so as that, you know, at night or whatever, people. Sorry for yawning there. It's, it's uh, just gone midnight here when I'm recording this. <laughs> um, you know, at night or whatever, people, you know, this area can get sort of chopped away and, and kept safe. So, uh, where the guests are near, we've done a, we use the wooden fence and then, you know, in the back of the area, just through the woods here, we just use the, um, the chain link fence, you know, where it's a bit more serviceable as opposed to looking good. Uh, and then we come here. We got, I need to, I've just remembered I didn't go back and add some sort of gate there, which we need to do. Some sort of big, like, pulling gate a little bit like we've done at the very front area of Pinewood Lodge a big gate that they sort of pull open in the morning to let people come up to the area if they want to so we've got these two sort of spaces either side of the main road here so or, you know at least the road through to the campsite that will be in a moment um, on one side we're gonna have some more lodges we end up with a dozen of these in the end on the other side I was hoping to get it done this episode and really sort of cap this area off unfortunately I'm out of time uh, it's just gonna be a very small play area uh, so not like a high ropes course or, or a assault course or anything like that literally uh, a slide a couple of swings a couple of those like animals on springs that you sort of sit and rock on that kind of thing uh, really simple stuff uh, I'll probably do that in maybe in this week's live stream. So if you want to catch that, you can. We stream every Wednesday night, by the way, uh, night in the UK time. That is 8 p.m. Uh, UK time. We stream for a couple of hours, and we normally jump into either Pinewood Studios or Geekism Studio, uh, Pinewood Hill, sorry, or Geekism Studios, and just kind of. Uh, do a bit of housekeeping really, a bit of maintenance, so little bits and bobs that need doing that maybe um, you know aren't really that interesting to do on a video but we can come and do it together and come up with ideas together and have a chat and just have a laugh and people insist on telling dad jokes and stuff like that so it's well worth coming along and saying hi if you're around on Wednesday evenings. Um, here it's just a case of going around and renaming everything because uh, these are numbered, these chalets. So this one is number 11 I think. Oh, number 12. Oh, there we go. That's the last one. Uh, a couple of other smaller spaces as well. I wanted to do um, some barbecuing areas. Now, these are taken from... A, uh, a, a bit of uh, a bit of land where my family are from originally. My, my family, we, I grew up just on the edge of Cannock Chase. If you know it, it's a it's a area of outstanding natural beauty. Uh, that's not an opinion. That's what we call them. And um, there's uh, some really beautiful walks through there. Some really great bike rides uh, as well. And there's one area just on the edge of the chase. I completely forget what it's called now. It's a large triangle of grass. Basically, the second we get a bit of nice weather, everyone piles into this area, and it's got lots of these uh, brick uh, barbecue areas that you can just kind of go up and use um, and lots of benches and also some larger areas that people can get a game of rounders or football on the go and usually an ice cream van will pull up as well 
Um, but I really liked the. I've got very fond memories of it as growing up as a kid, and I really loved the idea of having these sort of brick. Uh, barbecuing areas that people can come and just use when they want to if they're staying here and camping so uh, that's what we're doing here this is coal and we're actually using it as coal as well which doesn't happen very often normally um, we use coal for detailing coal is actually one of the smallest pieces in the game in fact I think it might well be the smallest piece in the game that, that uh, those little lumps of coal uh, as it goes so we have a couple of these again surrounded by some benches and here I'm just looking at options to make one of them turn on. Uh, it looks at flames originally but really, you know, it's more of a sort of glowing ember isn't it really on a barbecue. So we just have a little bit of smoke on one of them. Again, we're we have to kind of, uh, uh, what's the word, stretch our imaginations a little bit because the guests don't actually come up here, the guests won't use any of this. But again, it's that sort of idea of the model village, the model train set. Uh, we have it. It's as if it's as if Thanos has turned up, you know. Spoiler alert! But it's as if you know people have disappeared, people aren't there, but the but life is going on as if it was, uh, you know, how it was. So that's why the barbecue is flaming and uh, the, the the high ropes course is there, and you know all this stuff. It's just it's as if that it's as if there was no people there, but they'd literally just sort of gone for a moment, and but you know the world still exists. Uh, I think that's at least how model villages are done, you know, because obviously people don't walk around model villages or model train sets, but they sort of uh, have have they modelled as if life is going on there at the time. Uh, and then we have this path that cuts across the lake a little bit, oh, and I really wanted a uh, a Sleepy Hollow bridge. Um, so if you don't know Sleepy Hollow, it's a fantastic uh, old story about the headless horseman uh, and, a, and a, a, a young man by the name of Ichabod Crane who goes in search of him. Uh, I um, I wasn't particularly a fan of the recent movie. The, I say recent, it's probably about 10, 15 years old now, but there was a movie with Johnny Depp. Uh, I used to adore, there was a Disney cartoon version, I think it was Disney, um, where they used to sing Ichabod, Ichabod Crane. Oh, it was great. I used to love it. I used to watch it all the time, every Halloween and a few other times through the year as well. Yeah, it was a real big fan of it. Uh, and uh, they have this huge um, uh, bridge, uh, covered bridge, wooden bridge, that, um, that the, the Headless Horseman can't pass, if I remember rightly. So it, the story rolls around them having to get through this bridge a lot of the time. Uh, but there's also one similar in Beetlejuice. And uh, every time, I don't know why, but it's just one of these sort of uh, images that I keep in my head and every and again will just pop up and I, when I first put this path along the lake I was like, yeah, perfect, I want a Nicobog Crane Bridge along there. So uh, that's what we're doing here and uh, it's been a while since I've done a sort of good solid bit of detailing really. Um, most of the buildings I've done at the moment have been relatively detail light and that's purely because I want to finish this park and already Unfortunately, frame rate is starting to suffer a little bit. I'm somewhere in anywhere sort of high teens, 20s, that kind of number. Um, this park is nowhere near as detailed as other people's parks out there. I can only assume that people are using, um, you know, rocket fuel to power their PCs. If you look at somebody like Uthris that has over a quarter of a million pieces in Alpine Honesty and it still runs relatively uh, smooth enough for him to play at least uh, whereas I'm up to about 60 70 thousand pieces now and whilst it's still very playable it's just starting to get towards the point where it's noticeable and I don't really think we're halfway through the park yet and I don't want uh, Pinewood Hills to suffer the same fate as my original Let's Build Park that basically I just couldn't play anymore because it was that uh, that bad and unfortunately uh, you know, YouTube ad revenue isn't what it um, could be, so you know, no, no new PC on the cards. Although my PC is relatively decent, it's a couple of years old now. It was a custom build when I built it, uh, so it was pretty decent specs at the time. But it's probably about sort of pushing three and a half, four years old now. So you know, uh, there are there is better out there. Um, I won't be looking at upgrading the PC now though until we emigrate. So I've got at least the end of this year. Um, probably looking at April. Uh, when I uh, when I build a new one, so this has kind of got to last. So for that reason, I've kind of eased up a little bit on the details, and also it's been quite a fun challenge really to still try and get the uh, the look I want to go for, but without using thousands of pieces. So if you go back to the very first episode, second episode, I'm building custom roofs out of uh, little bits of wood, um, and I've that you know really if I if I got all the FPS in the world, I just custom roofed this as well and made it a little bit more higgledy piggledy, a little bit more like the bridge in Harry Potter or something like that. Uh, I'm just not able to do that now, so instead we use those large pieces and just move a few of them and recolor some of them. It gives you the idea of what I was going for. Uh, so this uh, road that we're building here actually is going to lead into a larger open area that's going to be a campsite. Um, again, 
it's going to be pretty light really but there's a couple of um, tents that came with the western uh, theme in the original game we're just going to be throwing a few of them around really just doing a bit of terrain work making them look pretty neat it's not quite finished we get a lot of it done but not quite finished i did actually have a play around with building custom tents using art shapes and some uh, slightly more modern looking tents but they just don't look great the art shapes just aren't the right thing um, I tried with glass as well because it's tends to have that very slightly almost luminescent quality about them because there's very slight see-through to them and um, unfortunately the art shapes were just a bit too solid um, so yeah it didn't really work out so we're just going to use the western ones uh, again uh, this is a real offshoot area really. this is just kind of tack you know finishing off this little area over here uh, a couple of buildings we do do over here that i'm quite happy with though um, this is the first one this is the shower block so again if you're out of the uk i'm pretty sure these are quite similar in europe because we, we camped in france years ago and i pretty remember it looking identical to this pretty much uh, in the states i just don't know i think you have a bit more of sort of a lodge setup over there but uh, one thing we have here in the uk are uh, lots of campsites um, and uh, we have these shower blocks uh, where people can come and get themselves washed obviously and also there's uh, usually areas that they can come and wash their dishes or their cooking equipment or you know the, whatever they've used to cook on the on their barbecues and uh, they're usually all connected into one place so the water only has to get pumped to one area um, so that's what I'm trying to do here. So we've put some toilets in again whether actual guests end up coming over here I don't know uh, but here on the front we've got a couple of sinks and then I'm just putting in some draining boards so that you can come and do your dishes and uh, yeah quite happy with how it turns out to be honest with you it's a simple build but uh, it looks like what I want it to look like so that's good uh, here I'm trying to add a mirror um, just again trying art shapes and glass and combinations and it just doesn't really look good and it's not really worth the pieces uh, I want to add a, uh, a sign the uh, there is quite a good uh, simple toilet sign but it lights up and this wouldn't really light up here but there's that fairy tale one and you know what it kind of fits it's a bit maybe it's a bit themed I don't know but it's the sort of thing that they found you know, the people who own this place found and thought oh that's cute we'll stick that up I don't know uh, you know the sort of place where they have signs saying bless this mess and all that kind of thing um, often restaurants and stuff will have uh, you know funny signs for for but boys and girls toilets or, or whatever so that's kind of uh, I felt like it was okay to stick that there and then finally another little building this is going to be the uh, the laundry room again uh, people come into camp for a week or two they might not have all the clothes so there's often some um, like a little laundrette basically some coin operated washing machines and things like that so just placing a smaller building for there and I wanted a pipe coming out the window to show where the uh, extractor was for the dryer and the only thing I wanted outside of here, because again, it's just the sort of thing I always find, is a, a board covered in leaflets from local attractions. So obviously this is near a very local attraction, very near it in fact. Uh, but still, you know, people are coming to camp here for a week or whatever, then um, they may all want to go and see other things as well. So they always have these little uh, uh, things that are filled up with um, different uh, leaflets for local local things going on sorry i thought i heard a noise back then but i didn't well i hope i didn't anyway because i'm in the house on my own it's midnight <laughs> um, <laughs> right so we're gonna put that in place there and again just run the path up to it and then some very light foliage work i've got to come over the whole thing here and do some more work to the uh, to the foliage um, it really does make it the problem is we, we, not necessarily the problem but uh, the issue we have a little bit is that the grass is just very neat and really all of this would be upgrown a little bit you know and it'd be really nice if we could have a a, a brush that almost created like a new alpha channel or something that sort of gave like a rougher i don't know how it really works that sort of stuff but so instead we have to kind of give the impression of that by using that scavolia and just sort of making tufts almost so here we go we play some of these western tents there. they're not ideal because they've got a big opening maybe i might have a little go and make uh, pushing them together to create larger tents uh, i don't know we're gonna have to have a little play with them because they've got these big openings and they don't really work uh, but from afar you know when you zoomed out a little it actually works quite well um here i'm looking for something i can use as a windbreaker i might come in and make some custom windbreakers using some art pieces and poles and things like that but those ones work quite well i've seen them work like that before and then here um we're gonna make a tether ball um like a larger tether ball that has like a basketball on the bottom that you can just sort of bang around or whatever 
again just to kind of fill out the area still need lots of work to be honest with you i've literally just done that um up to about quarter to 12 and i thought you know what i'm gonna have to stop there and go to bed because i'm gonna go and ride icon tomorrow uh, over at blackpool pleasure beach so um uh, that's it there's a couple of glamour shots for you thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it if you have you can give us a like it really does help out the channel and if you're not already don't forget to subscribe any thoughts queries or suggestions you can find them in the comments and if you fancy a chat you can find me on twitter i'm at john t sparrow thank you very much for watching I'll see you in the next one.